down here in the jungle. Is it not clear then, comrades, that all evils of this life of ours spring from the tyranny of humans? Only get rid of man and the, prob the produce of our labor would be our own. Almost overnight we can become rich and free. What then must we do? Why work night and day, body and soul, for the overthrow of the human race? That is my message to you, comrades. Rebellion. Rebellion. I do not know when the rebellion will come. It might be in a week or in a hundred years. Where was I? That is my message to you, comrades. Rebellion. I do not know when the rebellion will come. It might be in a week or in a hundred years, but I know as sure as I see the straw beneath my feet, the sooner, that sooner or later justice will be done. Fix your eyes on that, comrades, throughout the short remainder of your lives. And above all, pass on the message of mine to those who come after you so that a future generation shall carry on the struggle until it is victorious. Wow. George Orwell. My name is Marcus Conti. I'm an investigative journalist, artist, musician, songwriter, sole plaintiff in Conti vs. DSNY. Corruption, right? That's what Orwell's talking about. He's talking about the tyranny of man, the tyranny of big business, right? The one percent that take all the money, and the ninety-nine percent that do all the work. Right? That's what he's talking about. That's where we are right now. That it's easier than we think. It's just a rebellion. How do you? How do you, you have to get rid of them? Right? That's all it is. I'm filming. I'm filming me. I'm not me. Uh, so, it's the cops. Cops! Cops doing bag checks. Subway. The bombs. So, in this, um, oh, remember when, remember when Trump said lock him up? Yeah, lock him up. Remember that? <laughs> that was funny, right? Trump said lock him up. She's gonna lock him up. Bullshit. Right? It's tyranny. I ain't locking nobody up. Right. I'm gonna, in a rare, uh, rare moment, I'm gonna actually give kudos to the Clintons who did something in the 90s. I want to talk about. Now, in the 90s in New York, right, there was this business of uh, the Clintons saying, you "Remember Hillary Clinton? You remember the famous line Hillary Clinton called black youths super predators?" Right, remember that? That was a campaign talking point where she, she was against blacks because she called them super predators. But here's the truth, right? In New York City in the 90s, right, it was uh, Giuliani, mayor. There was a mayor, Giuliani. He became the face of 9-11. You guys know who he is, right? And the city was, there, there was rampant crime in the city, right? 42nd Street was a shithole. It was all pimps and hookers and drug dealers and, and, and gangsters and all this shit, right? And up in Harlem, right? Central Park, right? The top of Central Park is Harlem. And you had these young kids coming down in the early mornings, at night, and early evening, and they were they were attacking people in the park, right? It was like it was like it was you know, Central Park was very dangerous in the nineties and, and so they were super predators, not not necessarily black youth, but they were. That's where the term came from, super predator, right? I know, my, uh, you know, our friend H. A. Goodman likes to say, you know, run the line that um, Hillary Clinton called black youth super predators, but you have to put it, you have to put it in context, which is, and the context is that New York City became a very dangerous place in the '90s. It was a lawless place. Mostly, you know, in, the, in that area, Central Park and Times Square and 
you know, throughout the suburbs that you guys don't even know where they are, like parts of Brooklyn, like Bed Bedford Stuyvesant, Bushwick. Right? All these places were, were, were dangerous and this term super predator came about. So what was the what was the solution to that, right? Ju Rudy Giuliani was elected as the enforcement mayor and he said he looked around, he saw the crime, he saw the he saw the violence, he saw the the corruption in city politics, and he said, "We don't have to live like this, right? He, he, we don't have to live like this." He wasn't a Democrat or Republican. I, I know he's a Republican, but he, he really—that wasn't the point. He wasn't any—he he was for the people, right? And said, "We don't have to live like this." And what did he do? He cleaned it up. He—he he was elected mayor. And he did something about it. He started locking them up. The kids that were running around beating people up locked them up. Rikers Island was, 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 you know, breaking at the seams with population, right? He started to lock up the super predators. He started to lock up the drug dealers in, in Bushwick. They, they were taking over entire neighborhoods. You walk down four, four, na four blocks in, in, in Bushwick and it was all heroin dealers and cocaine dealers and crack dealers just out in the open. Right? Giuliani, Mayor Rudy Giuliani stopped all that because he enforced the law. That's what I'm saying. We have we have rampant tax evasion at the highest level, right? You know, fifty percent of our wealth bleeds out the top for people who don't pay tax, for the corporations that don't pay tax. The the, the, the regular people pay their twenty and thirty percent tax and that's what is funding the ability for these corporations to get a free ride. Now, if you you have to enforce the tax rule. You have to lock them up. Make the rules. Make the tax rules. They're already in place. And then when they violate them, get rid of all these avoidance tactics that they're, that they're using. It's illegal, right? It, it's, 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 it's glorified tax evasion. Get rid of it. Lock them up if they break the law, right? That's one, politicians. Money money is not speech. Corporations are not people. I'm a people, you're a people, we're, we're people, right? People, not corporations, people. This is the rebellion, right? People don't realize the power that they have. It's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be guns and rocks and that kind of rebellion, but a simple rebellion of more along the lines of what Gandhi said, which is passive resistance, right? That you, you, the, you don't have to do anything. If everybody is united and, for example, refuses to go to their cubicle for a week, or the police that refuse to put the uniform on for a week until the corruption stops, right? Lobbyists, people that crooked politicians 90% of what they do is is against the people and for the donor class 90% 100% people 100% of the people allegedly vote for politicians right and then they they, they, they turn around they represent 5 or 10% of the population the donor class the people that give them money by throwing price points out it's they're not donors they're they're buying favors they're buying favors. They're not donating shit, right? So when Trump says lock them up, Trump's Trump, what, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Where? Who would you lock up? You don't lock up anybody. You're playing patty cake. Q, it's a pompous dream, right? Q's a fucking bull. It's bullshit. Get your head out of your fucking ass. <laughs> Imagining that Q is some guy sitting next to the president. And 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 the and the, the, the rebellion and the, the the abolishment of corruption is coming. Drain the swamp. Right? I mean it, I don't know I don't know for whatever reason I'm having some clarity these days and uh, and I hope uh, I hope this message resonates with people that uh, the solutions are are, are the solution is, is easier than it seems. But it's not the person next to you. It's not competing with the guy next to you and elbowing 
in front of him for the job or for the, you know, the, the, the parking space or the, 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 that's not the problem. The problem is that, that the, the United States of America has a system where corporations can generate a lot of money. We put our faith in corporations. We made a switch. We, we believe hope, hope, hope. Remember Obama, hope, Mr. Hope? Mr. Hopeful said he gave discretion to the corporations. TTP, TPP, TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, right? That was his idea. That's what, that was his, his baby, right? Give corporations the tools they need and the support they need. We're going to support our corporations and give the support they need so that they can trickle down the money to the little people, create millions of jobs. It's fucking bullshit. It's all bullshit, right? They take the money and they run. They put the money off. They take, they take the profits. They fudge the numbers. The profits aren't what the what what the prof, what the profits say is not what the profits are. Profits are much much higher, right? They only declare a certain amount because there's no consequence to lying, right? They they they're making. How does Amazon? How does Amazon only claim five billion dollars in profit, and and their their stock is now reaching a trillion dollars in market capitalization? It's total bullshit. It's total bullshit. It's it's unregulated corruption at the highest level, and we pay for it. Right? That's not freedom. That's not that's not market freedom. That's oligarchy. That's not democracy. Right? Corporations are spending so much money. They own the they own the media. Right? You watch CNN, MSNBC, it's all bullshit, right? It's all fake. It's fake news. They want you to talk about, you know, Stormy, Stormy Daniels' tits and, and Donald Trump's penis. But they don't want you to talk about the, the corruption that they're involved in, right? That's where we fight, people. That's where the fight is. That's where the rebellion is and, and, and Occupy Wall Street, right? That's it. And nowhere, nowhere further, until you... Until you oust the power elite nothing changes my name is Marcus Conti subscribe to my station thanks man.